Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today I want to posit the question whether or not we would really be ready for martyrdom if the sheetrock hit the fan, so to speak. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Amen, Patris, et Filii, et Spiritui Sancti, Amen. Gloria, Patris, et Filii, et Spiritui Sancto, Secuturam Principio, et Nucet Semper, et a Seculae Seculorum, Amen. I'm recording this actually on October 7th, and it's, oh, I don't know, 97 degrees on the coast here in Texas. I went down to the coast to get some blue therapy to, to look at the, 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 the waves. I'm not an ocean person. I hate sand. I like going to bays and the lakes, but I can't record on the bay side because of the wind. So I'm recording over here. So would we be ready to martyr ourselves if, if the time came? I think there's there's a couple people, you know, there's maybe three different answers you could honestly give. There's going to be the no, just straight up, I'm a coward, there's no way. Then there's going to be like, yeah, I would, and then the sheetrock hits the fan, and then you apostatize. And then there's going to be those who say, absolutely, I will. And all three of them I find to be interesting, because you think about our Christian forefathers, especially during the time of the persecutions, the first 300 years of Christian history, which was Catholic history, but Christian history in general, you think how many saints were martyred during that time? Not, not, all, not just the 11 apostles, and if you count St. Matthias, the one who replaced Judas, all the apostles aside from St. John, but if you listen to the Eucharistic prayer, a lot of them are mentioned there as well. Felicity and Perpetua, you think of... Um, there's just tons of them. You think of St. Lawrence, St. Sebastian, just, just, just the list goes on and on. More recently, you think of Maximilian Kolbe and Edith Stein. You think of these people. Maximilian Kolbe, of course, uh, offered his life in the exchange of a, a young uh, Jewish man. And then you think, even today, you think of in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, tons of Christian persecution. Uh, there was a study I saw that within five years, there were 30,000 Christians, mostly Catholics, but also Protestants, that were martyred uh, by Boko Haram and other groups like that, where they kidnap the women and rape them, put them into slavery, and they, they also just martyr people because of their Christian faith. And you see it also happening in China. So it's not like we, we kind of just look at the halcyon days, so to speak, of the early church, the first 300 years before Constantine legalized it, as the time of persecution. Now, there's been martyrdom all the time. So could there be a time in the future where we will be martyred for our faith? Well, there's different types of martyrdom. You know, you think of someone like St. Maria Goretti. Uh, she was uh, 12 years old when uh, a 19-year-old boy tried to sexually assault her, and she didn't want to give away her chastity. And in some ways, that was a type of martyrdom. But if you're looking at a classic martyrdom where the government, I think of, of the stories of Felicity and Perpetua, for example, where you had to pay homage to the gods, the Roman gods. And if you didn't do that publicly, you'd be put to the lions, you know, fed to the lions or whatnot. And is there a time in the future where that could happen to us? Yes. I mean, sure, we're in soft persecution right now, but we could be in open persecution by the, the you know, 30 years from now, 100 years from now. Who knows? The way that the, the wind is blowing wouldn't be surprised. Now, if you're put in a camp, I just think of like Red Dawn, the old 80s movie where the communists take over and put Americans in the camp, and then there's that scene where they're all mowed down. Or whether it be, you know, whatever scenario, when you are told that you must apostatize your faith or, or, or you'll face a murder or, or even worse, they'll try to, to, to murder your family. Let's say they have your family as one. Like, if you don't say, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, uh, we're going to murder your family. What are you going to do? You've seen Scorsese's movie Silence, the one that takes place in the 17th century Japan. Uh, there were similar scenes to that where the native Japanese who were Catholics at this time, uh, the, the shogunates, were telling him to step on a statue. They would have like a, a, a foot statue of, of Jesus. And they would say, you must step on it, which was symbolic of you, you apostatize. And, and if they didn't, they'd be drowned, they'd be crucified, all these horrible things. So like, what would we do? And I think it's interesting because I think all three answers that I gave before are, are fascinating. Like The coward answer, like, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, maybe you wouldn't. Uh, but maybe, maybe the, the courage would come to you at the moment. The, the answer of, yeah, I would, but then I might apostatize. Well, that's kind of what's predicted. That's what's really predicted. If you read what's in the in book of Revelation, how during the, the time of 
the Antichrist that many will apostatize. Many will apostatize. And it's not because they're going to have a proverbial gun to their head, but they're going to see how the tea leaves are reading, so to speak, and they're going to be like, oh, it's not good to be a Christian right now. Oh, uh, Christians can't buy and sell like the mark of the beast. Or, oh, Christians don't have permission to fill in the blank. And so they're going to see, oh, it's, it's life's easier if I'm not a Christian. So you're going to see that. And, and, and a lot of people are going to leave the faith uh, during the time of persecution, especially when the Antichrist uh, is here. A lot of people will. And that's unfortunate because if you read the end of the book of Revelation, I, I have an episode here on a particular, like Christ gives a, a, a lot of lists in, in, in the New Testament. So does St. Paul, like the list of things that will lead you into perdition. And Paul does it in Colossians. Paul does it with the works of the flesh in Galatians. He has another list in the beginning of Romans. And Jesus has it uh, in, in the gospel where he talks about, uh, he lists out the things that will lead you to hell. And it's not the things you put in your mouth because they're talking about kosher laws, cash root laws, but what comes out of your mouth. And he talks about slander, jealousy, fornication. Anyways, he gives a list in Revelation 20. And one of the things he mentions in that list, which, which are all pretty consistent, they're always the same, thing, like immorality and, and whatnot. But he mentions cowards, those who turn uh, against the faith. So I'd like to think that I'd be in that last group, that I would be fine to martyr. Even if they're like, okay, we're going to kill your family. Well, I would tell my family, look, they're probably going to kill you either way, but we'll all be together in paradise. And we have to think not myopically, but hyperopically, because this is just a blip in a moment of time. And our eternity is eternity, right? After life's eternity. So if we were to apostatize because of either the, the pleasures of this world or the, uh, or the fear of, of being persecuted, we're not really thinking long term. And we really are, when you think about the parable of the sower, we're certainly not in the rich soil. Uh, we're the ones in the thorns or in, in, the, in the rocky soil because when the sheetrock hits the fan, we apostatize. And so we have to think like in that moment where that proverbial gun's put to your head, we have to think really long term. Is the juice worth the squeeze, as they would say? And it's not. You don't apostatize. We can't say we're followers of Christ only in the good times. And this is why we love reading the lives of the saints, for example, because they are role models to us as to when they had everything, they gave up their ultimate gift, their life, for Christ. And we are expected to do the same thing. Christ talks about we have to take up our cross, and there's going to be times, blessed are those who are persecuted. Those who try to live their life, save their life, will lose it. Those who try to lose their life will have eternal life, right? He's, he's, he gives us all these kind of warnings. So if you're in a moment where you feel like you're going to be martyred, I know it's, it's fearful, and I would certainly be scared as well, but we can't apostatize. And we must accept the, the red martyrdom and then wear the white robes, as it's mentioned in the book of Revelation. All the martyrs are demanding justice, and we can join that group. And I mentioned in a previous episode, I think I did like two years ago, like, what would be my final prayer? You see, like, the, the Cristeros in Mexico, they yelled out, Vivo Cristo Rey, before they were shot. And if I'm going to get killed privately in my cell, I would do the Anima Christi uh, in Latin. Because I know my, all my prayers in Latin. I would do it in Latin. And if I were to do it in public, like at a firing squad, I don't think they even do firing squads anymore. But there I would, I would probably do the Anima Christi in, in English. Because I think the Anima Christi is just one of those great prayers uh, that, that kind of encapsulates our kind of our, our Christian beliefs. Or, you know, if I, I would do that one. But if I didn't do that one, even a simple one like glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, um, maybe something like that. But either way, guys, post in the comments. Honestly, do you think you'd be ready for martyrdom if the sheetrock hit the fan? Until next time, take care, God bless and bring.